as we look to bring you more publications on the show this morning we are currently being joined by mr adefolarin who is a an, a public affairs analyst and he will be joining us to discuss some of these uh, developing stories from across the country hello and good morning good morning to you okay. how are you doing today very good <laughs> well quite um, a fresh development coming mm -hmm. in from uh, the state villa after mm -hmm. the defense chiefs meeting with the president yesterday exactly no we all expected after the president's speech on sunday yes and then the turn of event particularly with the flying of russian flag is not part of the country particularly in the northern part of the country Khan, Kaduna, Bauchi, Plitu and uh, as far as uh, Bruno State so so we expect a very tough security meeting and actually it happened and it lasted for about two and a half hours and resolution have been made which we are seeing on our daily news so it was a good one for the government to quickly act and react to the to the tra traceable offense has been uh, painted right now by people flying a Russian flag. I, for me, I since yesterday, I just refuse to call them protesters. I call them rampaging, rioting individuals or groups of people who felt that okay, protest is not enough. Yeah, is to cause harm, to cause havoc, and to invite anarchy through calling on foreign powers to come and invade our countries is the way forward. And we just have to condemn that. And I think that's what the security chiefs. And the president have agreed to do. Well, saying that uh, out of the entire flags that mm. they you know hoisted mm. both in katina and kano states mm. uh yesterday and the day before mm. uh, quite prominent out of them is the russian flag which you know sort of sends us a message to mm. the nigerian government and the nigerian populace exactly how, how, however it's a, a, a subtle message what do you mm. make of this do, ah. do you think that perhaps even though russia has refuted the claims perhaps mm. it's backed by the russian embassy I think what really happened and from what uh, we can you know, detect from what is happening is a lot of us have been able to reflect on the set of people that we are doing that. There is a particular local government in Kanun called Kumafagi local government. It is regarded as one of the local government that settlers from Niger, Mali are living, majority of them, although they have claimed to be Nigerians. And uh, that is where that flag issue started from. Yes. And when they started from there, it spread to other local government and it spread to other states. So what does it connote? You know, those set of people, in my own opinion, are not Nigerians. Get it? Even though they have settled to be in Nigeria, they have come to be doing business in Nigeria. But they, they are not originally exactly. They are not Nigerians. Nigerians. Exactly. So they are Nigerians. They are child, uh, Nigerians particularly. And uh, what is in their mind? If Russia could help them to topple their government, their civilian government in Niger, so they could also invite it to happen. And they have that opinion. And that kind of relationship that we have been able to cement over the years, whereby you, don't, you can't even differentiate a Nigerian from a Nigerian, a northern Nigerian because of the religious affiliate as well as the cultural affiliation, affiliation that comes yeah. into it. So it, it's quite dangerous to our, to our state, it's quite dangerous to our united Nigerian that we always come for and a quick one that the government is reacting. And for me, it's now time for us to begin to look at our immigration and migration law. Now, the, the polity is heated considering mm. uh, how the Russian government mm. helped the Nigerian government mm. alongside the two other uh, nations exactly. that now form the Alliance of Sahel States, exactly. you know, to topple their governments mm. and come into power. Mm. And you rightly pointed out that some of these people who hoisted these flags were Nigerians who were infiltrated into uh, the northern part of the country mm. from the border, of mm. course. And of, we, we all, all know that these countries, the ASH, mm -hmm. pulled out of ECOWAS, exactly. which has been a big issue even mm. for Pro President Bola Metinubu mm. and the ECOWAS mm. uh, government as mm. well. Is this going to be problematic in terms of diplomatic ties between Nigeria and uh, some of these uh, Sahel states? We are already having that diplomatic difficulties problem for them. Even though they are out of ECOWAS, they are finding it difficult to survive. Just that many reports are not being, they are finding it very, very difficult to say. They are landlocked countries, they don't have the support. Some of them are quite uh, having issues with their development projects and programs. And, you know, the mistrust that they had for France, they also have started developing that mistrust for, for Russia, Russia too. So, in our own case, in terms of our relationship, over the years, this set of people have been coming to the country, they have been settled in Nigeria, they have also helped us to blow up the population of the northern part of Nigeria because we have to give it to them because they also come in and increase the population in the northern part of the country and they also contributed to the economy one way or the other and we also benefit from them through agricultural produce and the rest of them but the key question is that they keep 
interfering in our political development, particularly in a way that justify why at this point in time we cannot see in the full glare that okay this is what these guys mean so if russia can help them to survive their politics whereby they topple up democratic government they can also do that in nigeria and that one will not give a, a, a yes to and the other hand in terms of they not part of ECOWAS again as i earlier pointed out they are having a big problem with that because all of ECOWAS countries even though we are still having that ECOWAS protocol that allow them free entry and free exist but they see a limitation on what you can do with them because they already formed in terms one. of trade and other uh, exactly. uh, you know bilateral yeah, agreement 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 you know recently the nigerian uh, tra uh, electricity transmission company T uh, tcn came out and said most of these countries are owing nigerian close to 500 million dollars in terms of electricity debt these are countries that are owing us so by the time we begin to urge them to pay the money it's going to affect the economy one way or the other but what we just need to be calling for now how to douse the tension particularly the rioting of i mean rioting of rapaging youth who may not understand the implication of what they are doing these guys that started the flag flying over russia they knew what they are doing but these other nigerians who may not have the understanding the deep understanding to be able to dissect what is happening we need, just need to educate them and inform them on what is happening and so they can have a, a, a repent of art and be more focused on being patriotic to Nigeria. Well, I'm, I'm certain that uh, if, if a, a grown-up adult, mm. even if it's a young adult, hoists a flag in protest mm. on the streets, they certainly do know what it means, mm. even if they were talked into it by mm. some certain uh, individuals. Exactly. Certainly, they must have had some sort of orientation mm. as to what this purpose or what the flag is supposed <laughs> to do, what exactly. message it's supposed to send. Mm. Now, th th there's a report from the police that they have nabbed the firstly the mm. tailor who mm -hmm. made the flags mm -hmm. people who hoisted the flags mm -hmm. but there's nothing about people who give the orders mm. for the flags to be ho hoisted i i actually with the investigation was still going to that you know just yesterday they showed the picture of the tailor man swing the, the flag and i also need to quickly say somebody has some of our brothers in not who are trying to change the narrative and said that flag belonged to the mini, uh, to Nigerian military. No, Nigerian military uh, flag is different from that particular yes. one because that one is having the pictures and some writings about the Russian, and even the arrangement of the colors are quite different. Quite different. Very very different. So those are brothers on the north should know quietly now that we have been able to identify the flag they are flying is that of Russia, not of that of military uh, Minister of Defense, because Minister of Defense has similar colors but in different arrangement. Red represent the military, uh, the army. The blue represent the navy. I mean, the air force, and the white represent the navy. Mm -hmm. So they should understand that. But on the other aspect of the arresting the tailor, as well as arresting thirty individuals who are flying the flag, is it, it, more investigation need to go into it. How did this start? Like I already mentioned, a local government has been identified in Canada. That this is where it originated from. So the investigation should focus on that local government and other local government that are affiliated to that particular area. And again, the Canadian state government, as if they have been very very quiet i see the, the situation overwhelmed the state government and that's why even though the coffee the coffee that they imposed on the state did not really make any difference but for the dss the police a bigger and wider spectrum of their investigation need to go deep into kanu and other part of the country particularly the north Kaduna, about where this flag has been flying yes. so they can really take a hold of the people doing it although the poor tailor man may may, just, may, be, may be contracted but you just need to give the right information to the government who contracted him to be sowing it and how did he even involve himself in the sewing of a foreign flag in Nigeria? Well, well, that's uh, quite a strong statement there. Uh, investigations should be made. Mm -hmm. The tailor should speak up. Exactly. And if needs be, there mm -hmm. should be some sort of uh, interrogation, tough mm -hmm. interrogation Definitely. for him to speak out. Definitely. Now, it, it, interestingly, here in Abuja, there is a twist to the story uh, where DSS reportedly uh, has arrested the, a leader, mm. not the leader now, mm. one of the leaders of the hashtag end bad governance mm. protest mm. who um, delivered a press uh, briefing alongside other members of the protest mm. recently in Abuja. Mm. What, what do you make of this development? Con considering that uh, on the first day of the protest, we saw the protesters on the street who started off peacefully mm -hmm. and they were leaders mm -hmm. of the protest mm -hmm. obviously there mm -hmm. the police commissioner cp bennett Igwe was mm -hmm. also there alongside mm -hmm. his um his men exactly. and then all of a sudden we see dss swinging into action to arrest the protester w what's the reason for that i, I, I think to start with is to understand that at the first instance of the protest organized by 
take it back movement, another individual groups that join the movement to be, be a demand that they want uh, something to be done around the economic issue on the gap protest. It was quite peaceful. The demand was very clear. The tone of message was very clear. But on the other hand, the the, the one that uh, had Ade Damarola, Mike Ade Damarola yes. that was arrested, the tone of the press conference was quite different from the from the initial uh, uh, press conference that they had. And how would you describe the tone of the press conference? I, I, I think on the second part, it was quite quite un, unbearable for the Nigerian state. We need to understand something about states, not just Nigeria. You can see what the UK Prime Minister is talking about, rioters that are rioting in the UK, that they will never go, they will regret their action. That's how the state talks. That's how the state shows its character and its nature. State and, doesn't, and its power. Its power. State doesn't wait for, allow imposters or people that want to challenge its power. And we must understand the state to comprise the bureaucracy, the military, the police, the prison, and the courts. Then, uh, the foundation of the state is by the ruling class. The ruling class uses the state as an uh, instrument of oppression yes. or instrument for good governance. Anyway, the, the ruling class decide to use the state. They use it either for instrument of oppression or they use it for instrument of good governance. Yes. But the tone of that press conference was not delightful for this Nigerian state. And they see it as a security threat. So that's why maybe they want to find out more why that statement coming from you have to go. Then again, we also need to understand that the protesters who started the younger protesters have been divided into two. The faction in Lagos already surrendered. They said they are no more doing protests anymore. That's why the protests in Lagos died down. And and somehow the heat wave of the protests seems to be picking up quite um, heavily in the northern part of the country, mm. uh, particularly in Kaduna, in Kano, Katsina, Yobe and the rest. Mm. Because it took another dimension. Because it wasn't as a result of what the Abuja protesters were looking out for or what the Lagos protesters were looking out for. Rather, what the other part of the country protesters. Because if you check and review what happened from Thursday to Friday, then from Monday yesterday to now. You discover that the people who were supposed to lead the protest in Kanu and all those other states in the north, they stopped. Before the protest even started, they said they are withdrawing. But because a room had been created that we are going on protest. And check out how did the protest in Kanu start? How did the protest in Kanu start? It how started off as riots. It started out riots. Young dudes just came to the street, blocked the highway, and that was protest to them. But for us who understand how this worked, it's rioting, it's rampage, it's not protest. And most of them don't even have the leaflet that was distributed in Lagos, leaflet that was distributed in Abuja concerning the demand of for the protest, hunger protest. They don't have it. None of them shared it. You get it. So that's why that the protest in this I mean in, uh, in the north and the south was quite very, very different. Apart from Plato State that showed a little decorum, but as we see right now, that one has been overtaken by hoodlums, by rioters and rampaging youth who also turn the protest upside down. And it's now turning like a religious kind of thing. In the just south, you see the protest very, very peaceful, even led by a pastor, led by a former minister. But you see the one that is happening in just north. Rampaging youth who doesn't even understand. have a clear cut on ideology of why the protest is on. Because most of them were just, oh, Onga, Onga, Zanga, 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 mean protest. Precious. But at the end of the day, what is the Zanga Zanga is all about? What is the protest all about? Then you block the highway, you collect people's phone, you hijack people's vehicle, you you you, you break their windscreen. It's also happening here in Abuja. On Thursday, I was all around in some media houses to analyze the protest. And the information we are getting, even when I get to Bega on that bridge, I saw it myself. That was when people begin to cut leaves and put on their vehicle because of I mean, well, it's it's quite a, a very prominent scene where driving down the road you'd mm -hmm. see a lot of cars with with leaves yeah, either the of them. behind their cars or in <laughs> front of the cars exactly and mm -hmm. I, I i asked someone and mm -hmm. the person said it's actually supposed to show some sort of solidarity with the protesters in mm -hmm. case you run into them not for, to protesters not solidarity is to show a, sh a sign that okay you have part and parcel of what in, in, in real terms when you see leaves on vehicle I remember dance growing up in Lagos when you see NLC, TUC, few people, it is to show solidarity. But this time around, it is to show that you are comp in compliance to the obedience that these guys, these young guys that blocked the road. Oh. Because one of the things they will ask you is that they will ask, you, What do you have? Uh, they, they are begging. They are using the opportunity to beg because the vehicle are or, or, or or to and stores people. Or, yeah, to uh, start uh, people and they ask you for one, something, the driver will give them 100 naira or 15 naira, then they allow you to go. You that doesn't have the leaf or your, the whatever, they will not cut and give to you and place it on your vehicle. So it's like you comply with them, not in solidarity in, in, in any case. And if you see what really happened on this Abuja Cafe Road, you know that it was just rampaging, not riot or not protest as 
we were, we, that was planned in Abuja. Well, uh, Mr. Defolarin, just hold your thoughts there. Uh, there was a statement made by a press briefing made mm. by uh, the Chief of Defense Staff General mm. Christopher Mulsa right after his meeting mm. with the President and other uh, service chiefs yesterday in Abuja at the State House. So let's uh, quickly take a look at a video where the chief of defense staff made some statements concerning hoisting of the russian flag in some parts of the country following the nationwide protest um today's meeting is uh, uh, such that we wanted to come and update mr president about the situation on ground uh, we know since the riots have started um, the role all the security agencies are playing you can see all of us together we had uh, about two hours meeting with mr president we explained to him in details the current situation on ground since the riots have started and what we realized is that yes initially people said it was um, a peaceful rival but we have warned against it because we realized that there are individuals that are willing to take advantage of it to cause me and we can see clearly what has happened since it has commenced criminals have taken over a lot of looting a lot of uh, stealing and all sorts happening and besides that i'm also aware we're also aware that i'm seeing all of us have seen it where some uh, foreign flags have been flown within the sovereignty of nigeria and that is totally unacceptable uh, we are warning in, in clear terms and the president has also said we should convey this that we will not accept anybody any individual flying any foreign flag in nigeria that is treasonable offense and it will be viewed and treated as such. So nobody should allow himself to be used by any individual. Also the issue of coups. Nigeria is a sovereign nation. Nigeria is a democratic nation. All security agencies are here to defend democracy and make sure that democracy continues to strive. We will not accept anyone pushing or taking any action, seemingly or for whatever reason, to want to push for any change of government. Democracy is what we stand for. Democracy is what we continue to defend. For those of them flying flags, if you see a lot of them are kids being pushed to do that. We are following up with those ones that are sponsoring them, those that are pushing them, because you know the flags were also made. We identified those areas and we're going to take serious action against that. The president is clear on his instructions on non, for us not to accept anyone that wants to disrupt the peace and tranquility of Nigeria. And we are all standing here together to show Nigerians that we're working closely, we're working together in synergy to ensure that there's peace and tranquility in Nigeria. That we have assured Mr. President. A looting in some states. For clarity. It was just a misconception. They actually have seen those things and they wanted to clear them away from that area and that's what was done. We have investigated thoroughly, the Chief of Army Staff is here. We have investigated thoroughly and there is nothing like such. No member of the armed forces will fall into doing that and it's very clear. Yeah, I think we've said that clearly, that the military is going to step in when it is out of ban. And we can see that for people, subversive elements, to push individuals to carry Russian flags in Nigeria, Nigerian sovereignty, that is crossing the lead line. And we will not accept that. And those ones who have done that will go in for the books and they're going to be prosecuted. I'm sure you have seen, I've seen, you have seen them on TV. So the TV will show because that's, that's enough for you, for you to see. General Christopher Musa there speaking at the State House uh, concerning the treasonable offense of hoisting the flag of a foreign nation uh, within the sovereignty of Nigeria. Mm. Mr. Adefolarin, mm. he quite made some strong statements mm. there, calling it a strong, a very big treasonable offense. Mm. Uh, now, let me ask you, what's what is it, what is it enshri enshrined in our constitution mm. that uh, should be the appropriate penalty for such an offense? Is that penalty? I say maybe the state just decide to say, okay, compassionate level from the state and they want to commit it to giving the person amnesty, but that person would have served long term imprisonment. If it's not death penalty, which is capital punishment, it could be long years of imprisonment. And when it comes to long years of imprisonment, the person must have served a very long time before maybe one president will not come and maybe pardon, someone will pardon, pardon the person. People will get you no know, that's but treasonable offense is capital punishment, which is death penalty. But in Nigeria, you know, most times the, the state will pardon, they may not want to convert that into uh, they may convert it to long term prison 
sentence. uh, sentences. So that's what normally comes to treasonable offense. But the key punishment is capital punishment. Even in the United States of America, when the riot that broke into uh, what they call it, uh, the capital, yes, uh, you, you happen. You do, one of the key punishment that they ring out was that this is capital punishment offense. But because of the scenario of that period, they just have to convert it to to, 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 to long term uh, prison, uh, prison sentences. sentences. Oh, oh, well, well, um, you you mentioned earlier that uh, the Russian flag that was hoisted is a sign of um, solidarity with Russia mm. that helped Niger, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, and mm -hmm. the rest, you know, come into power mm. as the uh, alliance of Sahel states. Exactly. And we also know mm. that in Nigeria, as it stands, uh, the the issue of who is a far long, a mm. far gone problem exactly. that used to bedevil the country mm. but democracy has come and has come to mm. stay mm. the chief of defense staff has said that they would in no under no circumstances mm. be any talks of coup from any quarters of the country exactly. we all know how russia supported coups mm. in these other countries mm. if perhaps something like this comes up do we have the readiness in terms of military strength to withstand the Russian government? I, I think something happened in 1999 when Obasanjo came in as military uh, civilian government. They reorganized the Nigerian military. They, dis, they disarticulate most of the Nigerian military arrangement to the point that uh, for anybody, whether to be influenced, maybe a civilian to influence someone to carry out the coup, is going to be very difficult. I don't know whether you have noticed over the years that military reshufflement, down of personnel being uh, uh, and uh, send or redeploy, deploy. It takes place rap rapidly. Yes. And it takes place in a, in in a very unsuspected way, in a way that you don't even know when it happened. So because of that formation from 1999 today, it has made a lot of discouragement to any military men to think about coup. And also since then, the military have been well taken care of, particularly at the top rank level to the middle class level. Yes. The, they are, although we don't still know that they still need more improvement for the rank and fight. But as it stands today, a lot of them have benefited from civilian government that we are experiencing, particularly democracy. And you can see how some of them, when they retire, they keep on being recycled into government activities, get into politics, involving themselves in politics and the rest of them. And even being sent on, uh, and, and, on, on foreign mission, even after retirement. Some of them became ambassadors, one way or the other. So the democracy we have practiced in 1999 have been able to reshuffle and rearrange and give a new orientation to Nigerian military. Although you cannot rule out a foreign influence, but for that foreign influence to really to really take a a, a slide, yes. it will be very very difficult. And not to mention that we also have some foreign interest that want democracy to remain in Nigeria, that want democracy to remain in several parts of Africa, because democracy we are practicing favor Western powers, because it's a capitalist democracy. It yeah. ensures that the economic oil continue to grow, and this economic oil. Favor them one way or the other. Even China, as we speak today, we never even want a military coup to happen in Nigeria because but, but, it will but, favor but, them. But we, 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 can't, we can't blame them considering mm. the fact that we also enjoy relative peace mm. with their support. Exactly. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the issue of coup deterrent mm. is a thing of the past in mm. the country. Mm. Democracy is here. Democracy mm. has come to mm. stay. Democracy has shown that there can be an all-inclusive government exactly. as opposed to the it's totalitarian selective, and selective mm. uh, military dictatorships that we have had in the past. Exactly. So, so that what I'm trying to point out that in as much as democracy have come to stay in Nigeria, there are a lot of benefit, economic benefit to it in terms of the democracy, capitalist democracy that we practice, that the Western power would definitely want to support it. You can see what is happening in Burkina Faso, Mali and Nigeria that is, that is under military. The economy is not open. It doesn't, it doesn't support free market economy. Yeah. But Consider Nigeria, consider Kenya, consider South Africa, consider other African countries that support free market economy. Because one thing about Western democracy is that it opens your economy for free market philosophy. So with that in place, nobody will want to jeopardize that and allow a military dictatorship to come out that will come and turn the country into a single line economy whereby the government dictates everything. And that will bring what we call normally in Marxism Lenin's uh, analysis, we call it state capitalism, whereby yeah. the state now control everything to military dictatorship. So the Western power will not want it. Even if it happens, you can see what happened in, the, in Libya. After overthrowing Gaddafi, they ensure that civilian government take over. 
And when Libya was by Bacchanized into different states, they also ensured that it comes together as for because of the oil, uh, as because of the oil resources that yeah. is there. So it, so they will always ensure that democracy stay because it will help the economy and to help to ensure that democ capitalist democracy is getting strengthened and getting stronger in African soil. Well, in view of the uh, president's order of mm. a crackdown, a total crackdown on uh, hoises mm. of the Russian flag and their sponsors, mm. quite a controversial figure in the country and a human rights activist as well, who has also been a, you know, a presidential candidate, uh, running candidate in the past, uh, talking about Omoyele Shore. Mm. He made a statement, uh, which is captured on the front page of the Matrix newspaper. Now, I would quote, he said... Not treason. Christians, Muslims fly Israeli Palestine flags. Hmm. And, the and, question, and, the, and the question will push to him at what level and for what purpose do they fly those flags? They fly those like the Russian, the Israeli flag can be flying church programs and the rest of them. The Palestinian flag was flagged as a solidarity for what is happening in the in the Middle East. Yes. You know, the bombardment of Palestine. So he I think maybe he, he didn't think twice before he made that statement. And also you also understand Shore to be someone that has been calling for revolution, revolution and he has been charged on several times on treasonable offense. Although the government didn't take that reasonable offense serious the way they took it serious with Namdekan. So he may have made a statement because he didn't think deep of at what level we are those Russian flag. I mean, well, do, uh, well, this Russian flag is being flagged at this point. And when Palestinian flag, as well as Israeli flag, was being flown by Nigeria, at what level and for what purpose were they flying? For this particular one, it's against Nigerians, not just Nigerians in Kano, but Nigerians generally. And not just Nigerians alone in this case, including the entire West African coast, because what they are in, trying to invite is, if by the time it happens in Nigeria, Benin Republic is not free, Togo is not free, yes. Liberia is not free, Sierra Leone is not free, that means the entire West African can be overrun with military coup. So we must condemn that and we must also encourage our brother so away, to always think through some of his statements. Well, considering his past troubles with the federal government or successive governments mm. in the country, do you think that this is perhaps, well, of course, we have established that it's a an unguided statement, mm. but do you think that perhaps it's still going to cause more problems for him as an individual, uh, being that the president has already ordered a crackdown on anybody involved in Either mm. promoting, mm -hmm. hoisting, mm -hmm. or, indirectly or, or, or indirectly supporting exactly, exactly. the Russian flag. For now, Omoyole is not in Nigeria. So he's in US, he has gone back to the US. So yes. no crackdown will affect him. You get to understand. So the issue for now, for now is. And again, if he eventually comes back home, which I know he may not even come now, maybe next, maybe until 2027, when we're going to be having an election, because that's when he'll come and contest. Yes. But for now, he's not coming, so it may not affect him. But just that for us to continue to encourage ourselves, if we really want to support a united Nigerian, we should not be releasing unguided statements that will further fuel the crisis that we have found ourselves at this point in time. So maybe maybe after making that statement, we go back and realize, that, okay, this statement I made, is, this right, is it right at this point in time for someone who wants to govern in Nigeria, want to become a president? And that's why many people hold it against him that you want to become a president of the country, but you're always releasing unguided statements Against, 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 uh, against the people, and, is, and these are the people that you are seeking their vote. You get it. I, if you check his uh, Facebook uh, followers, there are always people who are against some of the statement that it's always been. particularly on this uh, protest. You see him talking about uh, this protest today will be massive. Like when he made statement yesterday that this protest will be massive yesterday, a lot of people asked him, Come and check Abuja, come and check the girls. Nobody's protesting again. So, what is massive about what you are saying? So, we just need to be very proactive. And show patriotic Z for this country. If I am, for example, want to be a governor of my state, Lagos State, will I be condemning the people or be condemning the government? When I know that one day I will be there. And most people that doesn't understand the 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 interest of governance always find it very easy to criticize. Although we can criticize, but criticize constructively and provide solutions. The question we will have to push to so what solutions have we been able to push out at this point in time that we are in the crisis? Well, push patriotism, push all inclusivity mm -hmm. and ensure that uh, we as good citizens mm -hmm. of the country remain uh, loyal exactly. to the nation. Exactly. Well, moving on, uh, Mr. Adefolarin, let's uh, talk about uh, the situation in Kaduna State. Mm -hmm. There is already a curfew impo imposed by the governor of Kaduna mm -hmm. State, mm -hmm. uh, Senator um, 
uh, Obasani. Exactly. The chief of defense staff, General Christopher Musa, mm. is we all know is from mm. uh, from Kaduna State. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that maybe uh, through his influence, some sort of normalcy would return to Kaduna State anytime soon? There is a curfew, but mm. the citizens or people in Kaduna State are not adhering to that curfew, in, as it stands now. We are very correct, but we need also need to understand the dissection and the, the dynamics of the Kaduna protest. Most of this rioting rampage is happening in Kaduna North. The southern part of Kaduna is free from this particular rampaging, rioting, and flying of flags. You get it? Yes. And the southern Kaduna is almost close to the Abuja aspect. Even though we have protests around the Kaduna Abuja, which lead to I mean, coming down to Niger State, very close to Suleja. But the, the, the Zaria part is where this rampaging rioting. And you can see that the Zaria part is very close to Kanu. Yes. Very, very close to Kanu. But as rightly asked, can we bring a so of peace? Definitely will bring a so of peace. Because on Thursday, when the protest started in Kaduna, the Kaduna Metropolis, the Kaduna, Kaduna area, the, the television area was very, very peaceful. Some people even didn't go out for the protest. But majority of people that protested in Kaduna at that Thursday and Friday, we are partly from the Zaria end of uh, Kaduna. Yes. So when the rioting and coffee was also imposed, it was majorly imposed on that part of the state. But later on, when they now discovered that it was also maybe it could spread. I know Kaduna is very volatile when it comes to violence and protest, but I mean violence and rampaging because of the religious crisis that we have had in Kaduna some years back, 2003, 2007, then 2000. One and two thousand and two periods yes. because of the Sharia. So the governor had to be very sensitive, and that's why it's it's, it's it's a volatile exactly. it's exactly. a volatile state. Almost the same situation that you'd find in just the mm -hmm. two states. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that spirit of volatile state was transferred from Kaduna to just just was very peaceful. At but first, uh, again, yeah, well, the two thousand and seven local government election that erupted that made just also a volatile place for people. That's why many people are moving out of just, especially people that are not indigenous who are maybe rest, a resident or a, rest, a settler have to leave just up, uh, except for the just metropolitan which is the just city that we can see is fine a lot of uh, non-indigenous living there but the other part of the local government a lot of people have left so Kaduna is very volatile and that's why the governor just have to bring an a, 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 a blanket kind of a coffee on the state for which uh, general christopher peace could come and we just owe that well well following the protest there is a report from abson and kasima mm. uh, that in kaduna and zaria alone about 700 billion naira was mm. lost mm. in the first five days of the protest exactly. this is captured on uh, the vanguard newspaper so let's uh, pick up the vanguard newspaper this morning and take a look at that story on the front page of the vanguard newspaper You'd find a story of interest. Kaduna, Zaria, Boyle, over 700 billion naira lost in five days. Mm. Asbon, Kasima say. Kasima, Asbon count losses as protests become violent in Kaduna, Zaria, continues in Lagos, Abuja, Kano, Jos, and Benin. Rescue Nigerians now protesters with Russian flags beg Putin in Zamfara. Russia not party to flags flown during protest, embassy says. Tinubu security chiefs meet. Police arrest 31 for distributing introducing Russian flags in Kano, Kaduna, Jigawa and others. Now this is accompanied by uh, pictures of protesters in Kano state hoisting and displaying the Russian flags as well as uh, people in Kaduna as well and people in other parts of the country katsina you might also note people in katsina hoisted the flag of the russian country two stories of interest here hmm. are they following definitely se se 700 billion naira lost in five days mm -hmm. i want to ask firstly how possible is it that we lost 500 billion naira in five days in kaduna alone because the business activities have been shut down the banks are not working. The telecommunication services are also providing skeletal services. All the tourism centers, like us, I mean hospitals, uh, hotels, are shut down. Market where people normally go and buy are shut down. Nobody is coming out to do any business. Nobody is doing any transaction. So by the time you put all the total calculation in terms of transactions that are supposed to be carried out in a day or for the five days in Kaduna and Kanu together, that's why they arrive at that 500, uh, 700 700 billion. I remember in, in totality. 
when this protest was scheduled for 10 days, a uh, expert came together and said, okay, we may lose up to a, tri a, one, a, a, a trillion naira if the protest go through seven, I mean, 10 days. 10 days. Now we can see that only Kadna alone, 700 billion naira. If, uh, if we recount losses from different parts of the country, it might have well exceeded 1 billion naira by now. Definitely. As I say, 1 trillion naira has been one, one, has yeah, one trillion naira. going to lose. That means the GDP will lose 1 trillion naira if this protest go through 10 days. Now, Kadna alone, we have lost 700. Thank God that Lagos have to pull out of the protest after a day or two. And now Lagos is stabilized. The central area of Lagos yesterday, when I went through some of the activities in central area, the central area, the central business area, talking about uh, the, the, the where we have majority of the bank's headquarters, the, the central area was working, everybody was out to do businesses. But we just hope that peace will return to Kano and Kaduna because that's where we have some of our cottage industries and cottage factory, uh, as well as where we normally do logistic businesses that come in, as well as it's a, it's a link, a route to transportation of food items from Chikawa, from KB and the rest of them down to the south. So we just hope that peace will be done so that things can work very well. Uh, a stripe line story here uh, is quite interesting. Hmm. I will read it out. Rescue Nigerians now. Protesters with Russian flags hmm. beg Putin in Zamfara. That is very sad. So why can't they ask their governor to do something for them? And it also this why some of us are saying, what are the governors doing? Although I could also understand the peculiarity of some of these protests because the, the, the area, the location that is some of these protests takes place is in the suburb of the state. The majority of that is in the suburb of the state. But because of the challenge that they will have if they quickly, if they go into the city centers, that's how most of them organize these protests at the suburb. And the suburb is where we have most of the poor people living. So the, the governors have asked, maybe we may not have gotten a full information, security information of what is happening. But as he's reading the newspaper, he must have gotten in. Then on a part of the security uh, architecture of the state, we need to rework it and see how security personnel can also be moved into the suburb and douse the tension. Because if they, are, if they just sit at the city centers, they will just be protecting the city centers, protecting the government facilities. But meanwhile, the damages are coming up from the suburb areas. Yes. Like when I mentioned Maraba Massacre, that's where the damages that would have affected areas like Asukuru would have come in. Uh -huh. But when the security forces now move to that area, the doubt the tension and as we speak right now there's normalcy between Kefi and Abuja. Well, moving on to the international scene, uh at the following. There's a protest currently ongoing in the UK. Exactly. There's a protest currently ongoing in Bangladesh mm. that has even made the Prime Minister mm. who has been in power for about fifteen years mm. to flee the country. Mm. There is a protest in Nigeria. Mm. Are we seeing a wind of protest sweeping across the world? Because mm. now we wouldn't say it's in, in West Africa or mm. just Africa. It's mm. it's in about, you know, three different continents. Mm. Although the protests have different uh, purposes. The one in the UK is as a result of knifing, as well as the discounted element who believe that uh, government need to take proactive action against the knifing of young people or in that regards and you, you also know that the uk protests also turned violent because violators now take advantage and begin to attack sh shops attack hotels attack individuals then the one in bangladesh was led by students who felt that uh, the prime minister have overstayed in government and some of our policy is not good enough for students yes and that's why they raised and went into protest and the protest was not just uh, uh, for students alone the people also took advantage of the protest particularly disgruntled politicians in Bangladesh mm. and they thought maybe if the if the Prime Minister resigned or, or someone else would take over but they are they, they failed in that regard because as the Prime Minister left the military took over so it's going to be another setback for politicians even though the the military have uh, said they're going to be critical government but that critical government most of the politicians will not be included in the critical government yes because it normally the military will just pick their own set and people they know not actually politicians and that's where we see that a new set of politicians will now come up like what is happening in tunisia as we speak right now after the protest in 2009 2010 that overturned uh, uh, their former president uh, ben ali after that tunisia have never had a peaceful transition in government the new person that has, has always been quite chaotic. chaotic and funny enough these people that are ruling uh, in Tunisia right now, the people that became a new face of politician or new face of the politics in Tunisia, were well, the people that staged the protest then. So how come most of them now became a dictatorial on Tunisian people? The current president was part of the protest then. And he has been in power, he has been punish, sending everybody to jail. All the con contenders against him today. That will tell you that human being, 
that natural greed is always there. The moment you are given the opportunity to, to be in power, you just express that greed. So that's why sometimes people are agitating that this person is not good in government. Give them the opportunity to be there and they may even perform very, very woefully in government. Well, you can also join the conversation by uh, joining us on different social media handles. You can also watch us on DSTV channel 258, on Star Times channel 140, Avo TV app, Limex World TV app, and Niger TV app. Remember to also watch us live from any part of the world by logging on to www.adbntv.com forward slash live. In view of the nationwide protests that have rocked the country since August 1st, some parts of the country have returned to peace and normalcy, including Lagos, Abuja, Akwaibom State, and other parts of the nation, as captured on the front pages of the Nation newspaper and the Business Day newspaper, where it says that business is returning to its normal state so let's pick up a copy of the nation newspaper and the business day and see what the headlines there read on the front page of the nation newspaper it reads businesses open in peaceful in peaceful lagos while bank looting in kaduna businesses open in peaceful lagos bank looting in kaduna state police protesters battle in abuja Coffee in Plateau, Bauchi, Kaduna, uh, Coffee in Plateau, Bauchi, and Kaduna, while Benin is peaceful. Under that uh, story is a picture of the defense chiefs after a meeting with the president. And the writer's story on the front page of the Nation newspaper reads Flying foreign countries flag treasonable CDS wars. Russian flag bearing protesters tell us held counters out says embassy right next to that is the business day newspaper with the lead story businesses reopen as states contain simmering protests police arrest 873 protesters security council vows to resist push for change of government mm. three points mm. firstly Let's talk about the normalcy that has returned to states, mm. especially in Lagos mm. that had, you know, the most agitations mm. pre the protest. Exactly. I, I think what really has happened in Lagos was that there is a new understanding between the protesters and the government and they also cut across what the protesters really want. And uh, one of the things that was broken was that we need to remember what happened in SAS, how the government or the state and people of the state lost a lot of properties, lost a lot of infrastructure, probably infrastructure in Lagos. So I think that narrative really sink into the heart of the protesters because they don't want the protests to be hijacked by rioting, uh, rampaging groups. So that's why they back down and the protest. And, and we all know the, the amount of havoc that mm -hmm. was wrecked to the Lagos state, not just the government, mm -hmm. but even private institutions, in exactly. private en entities, mm -hmm. bosses were, uh, BRT bosses were burned. Mm -hmm. Banks were looted, mm. churches were burned, mm. mosques were burned, mm. people's offices and shops were looted. Uh, is this well? We all know it's a it's a move in the right direction, mm. but doesn't it undermine the actual purpose of the protest in the first place? I, I think it, we can you can see it from a mixed angle. Mixed angle in the sense that the demand of the protesters yes was concrete, but it also has some fault. For instance, one of the key demands, that's why many people voted the president's speech, was that first of all, it must be was be, was be removed. Or they remove or return, reverse. Yes. Oh, yes. It yes. has to be reversed. That's what. The, so that's one of the key demands. Then the second demand, which was very, very concrete, was about reduction in the cost of governance. Another one was a reduction in tariff of electricity. But the president has clearly made it uh, evident that there won't be any reversal on his policy on fuel subsidy removal. Definitely. And why Lagos protesters quickly you know, understood that particular aspect was that a new information, a new understanding of how, how the subsidy is working was disseminated to many people in Lagos. Yes. Particularly with the new innovative way of world government is generating in terms of revenue and how state governors are not any much from FAC allocation. You get it? So I think that understanding really sink into people and they also understood that, okay, if this is what we are seeing, can we also make a concrete demand? And one of the concrete demand is that most of them are now going back to this seven demand of NLC. 
and that has been one of the forefront uh, uh, campaigns Bonus, yes. that some of us have asked them to put in their demand. One was the minimum wage, which has been agreed. The other one was the CNG buses. Three thousand of them was promised by the government to buy for Nigerians. Where are the buses? Even though the government have shifted that by saying that we are providing kits. Uh, CNG kit and kits and the rest of them to, for to, motorists and the yes, rest of them. But they promised to use. a 3,000 bo- uh, CNG buses to be distributed across state. So we need to have that. Then second was around the refineries working. The four refineries was promised that they are going to work before the end of this year. So can we stand on that as one of our demand? The other one has to do with the uh, government showing the effect of food, high cost of food, by working with security to ensure that there is peace around our food and agricultural producing areas and is providing security for farmers that is one of the demand although it was also part of the demand in the uh, the, the 10 to 10 demand of the protesters but emphasis has just been on uh, a first of the mover yeah. and that was the thing i mean the song that most of the protesters were singing so if that's anyway, subsidy must come back. Subsidy must come back. Well, a lot of them believe that when subsidy uh, is returned, mm-hmm. somehow it's going to trickle down to other parts of their request. Mm. Uh, if you look at it critically, it's probably the the first um, indices mm. that brought about all these other uh, and, and ensuing problems that led to the protest, the removal of fuel subsidy that has made the prices of commodities in the country to skyrocket. Mm. The economy is, well, stabilized in a way, but still the common man is suffering. I, I think that, that, that could be seen from the surface, but the beneath it is not because of subsidy removal. Before now, we have been having a series of high costs of things. When Bayou was in government, the price of fuel was between 200 to 250. But does it represent that every day you enter the market, the trader will be increasing his product by 2 naira, by 10 naira, by 5 naira, by 20 naira, every day? So those are the areas that we look at it critically. But on the other side is this. In as much as this subsidy has come, nobody is asking the other question that, ah, how come every month we are now sharing 2.5 billion, 1.9 billion, I mean 1.9 trillion, 2.5 trillion as FAC allocation to state governors. And the state governors are confirming it they are receiving the money. Yes, government nothing has been done. Nobody is asking that question in that regard. And that's where the government came in and said, okay, even though we, we, we you guys want us to bring back subsidy, we have this the benefit of what we have been seeing with subsidy. And again, subsidy, if, it, if it, they are allowed to come back, our debt profile will also increase. You can see that what the, the government said, I talk about the, the debt to revenue ratio have dropped from 92 to 68 as a result of the reduction and around the uh, government revenue as well as not paying too much for subsidy or whatever they have been able to do in that magical aspect but the argument for me is this a lot of us ask for subsidy to return can we stand on the four refineries to work a lot of money have been spent on the refinery during year as uh, years leave you other represent year adra, 800 million US dollar was given to nmp to re- to do turn around maintenance for all the four major refineries the man that was there took the money and nothing was done even though it was a cousin to the late president 800 million US dollar during the time of the military came 19 billion dollar was also demarcated for turnaround maintenance of uh, all the refineries all the refineries yeah all of a sudden there's a new twist all of a sudden there's a push of a uh, and those monies have not been accounted for ever since for it. nobody to ask questions so that is the major issue that we need to push for and the president whether by act of a uh, uh, oversight or by act of not trying as much as well to put too much pressure on the NMPC, much have not been heard. That's why in his speech, one of the things I thought it was that he didn't even talk about the refineries. He didn't even talk about the six other demand that NM, uh, labor acts of him. So he just tell us what he has been doing from May 29 that he took over till now. Although we, we have our applaud his effort in that regards, the student loan, the credit corporation for credit scheme and the rest of them. But the challenge remains that in as much as government is spending all this money, including the 570 billion bailout that his own government gave to state government, not the one that Buari gave you. His own, his own, the bailout gov- uh, Buari gave was different from the 570 billion that he gave to state government. What have we really achieved? Well, there's a story of interest on the uh, front page of the Guardian newspaper where it, it says that the FG is prioritizing national, the National Assembly and the State House in spendings amid. MDA's funding crisis. Mm. 
I want you to hold your thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. We're going to get your thoughts on it. But let's uh, quickly take a look at the Guardian newspaper and see some of the infographics captured on the front page of that paper. Well, on the front page of the Guardian newspaper this morning, you'd find the headline story, Federal Government Prioritizes National Assembly State House. State House spendings amid MDA's funding crisis. Uh, it's followed by an infographics of uh, uh, Nigeria's oil commitments versus the average production volume as captured by the Guardian newspaper. Widening gap between expenditure and revenue nears crisis level, leaving FG with a spending shortfall of over 50% in first half of 2024. Commitment to local refineries, 450,000 uh, barrels per day. Now, uh, oil production is at 1.3 million uh, BPD, uh, B BPD, while oil-backed loan commitment is at 280,000 BPD, uh, JV Partners 364,000, and Direct Sale and Direct Purchase Deal Commitment at 140,000. Right next to it is re released funds in the first half of 20. Uh, 24 by the federal government now to the national assembly about 86.2 billion naira has been released to the presidential air fleet 13.86 billion naira the state house 40.5 billion naira total released funds to mdas in the first half of 2024 is 9.53 trillion naira and total funds for mdas in 2024 is 38.8 trillion naira very interesting but we also need to look at the figures from the perspective of the releases what they capture is it for current the current expenditure for capital project you can see the ones of the mdas and ministries majority of them are for capital project particularly means of works yes and means of power uh, aviation education have received a lot of funding for capital for projects for capital projects particularly the ones that focus on direct projects road rail uh, airport upgrading as well as the one that also capture like uh, the student loan as well as the ca uh, credit, uh, cash credit go, uh, programs as well as the food program in the agricultural sector so we need to look at those ones from the capital expenditure then the current expenditure where that's what we normally have for that's why people are calling for cost of governance reduction yes. and when i had the opportunity to speak on this issue i said cost of governance reduction means that we have to review the laws and guide our budget because you just saying and uh, reduce cost of governance Reduce cost of governance. That means you have not really specified the aspect of cost of governance that you that want. That is going to be reduced. Is it the capital you are talking about, or is it the uh, well, 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 due to the lack of specification, that is probably why we have um, members of the House of Representatives mm. choosing to slash their salary by fifty percent, which, although a commendable feat, mm. is rather insignificant to the wider scope of things to definitely, better the lives of Nigerians. Uh, definitely, because the allowances are quite quite much than just their basic salary. Their basic salary is not up to two million per month but the allowances they get that rise up to 15 million and 31 million for the senate 15 million for the house of reps is where people are having issues where people see that okay if someone is collecting allowances for life for newspaper someone is collecting allowances for new dress new clothes and someone is also collecting allowances for other upkeep that many nigerians were like no this is not what we want so get it if it could just be a basic salary that they are any yes. no more allowances then people will have that understanding because the president's salary is not up to also also within that range of amount you get it yes. so but the allowances where we have issues the extra costs that bureaucracy enjoy in government that's why we have issues because the extra costs nobody can really account for it in a way that nigerians can understand okay this extra cost is also for them to be able to to to, to help them uh, put their mind away from corruption because we need to understand why government normally do all this welfare package for government officials to keep their mind and their thinking away from on preferring yes. government public uh, funds but on the other way around nobody wants to have that trust that even though they give you all this money as a welfare that, that will not stop, going you to from, stop you from from, not from dipping your hands in the to, pocket to of, exactly. of the public so uh, until, space. On, until that mistrust is broken until that mistrust gap is built back into trust nigerians will always have issues why is it that when someone is appointed into government position either a chairman or a dg you see village people coming to sing and begin to praise it and and beat drums and beat, dance exactly with, because with, they know that, uh, with even uniforms though, even though the man will tell you that my salary is not, a minister salary is around 966,000, but the allowances that go with it that's why when the minister is wearing a a 10 by 10 agbada 
and the man and that thing I plan tenor, but it's not sold by a real site tailor. It's sold by a fashion designer that will collect no less than six hundred naira for that one piece. Six hundred thousand so, naira. So yeah, six hundred thousand naira. Then you now say, okay, you are collecting your salary is now sixty thousand. How come you are having one, two, three? You are wearing a three pair suit of over how many thousand naira? So that's where the people have that mistrust distrust in, or in their mistrust or distrust against people in government. Yes. So we need to build that particular aspect. And that's why when they ask for cost of governance, some of us say, okay, cost of governance, let's look at the renovation side, let's look at the salary side, let's cut it. And that's why there have been a suggestion that let's have a part-time legislature. Go there as a part-time. You can still be doing your business and be doing this work as a part-time. Then you collect lesser sal- basic allowances or salaries at the end of the day. But the issue still remains that these people, even though they are doing the part-time, once their mind is not clear away from corruption, they will continue to influence government institution to get one or two things for them. So you can see what happened in National Assembly or that sort of reps over probing of NNPC. Well, 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 I was about to, I was about to get to that. Mm. Uh, you, your last statement there, uh, where you talked about corruption, ensuring that there is a mind, mindset shift mm. from the status quo exactly. of I just want to get in there mm-hmm. and pick my own mm-hmm. collect my own mm-hmm. share of the national cake exactly. there is a story of interest on the guardian newspaper mm-hmm. that the house of representatives has dissolved the panel mm-hmm. you know probing allegations of dirty foil mm-hmm. blaming it on negative media coverage mm-hmm. you you have been on the show a number of times exactly. and we've discussed exactly. this exactly uh, in in your opinion was this as a result of negative media coverage or as a result of the facts that have been laid bare by both uh, um the, the people involved the, the people involved exactly. talking about the Dangote refinery mm. and you know the N- nmdpra boss i i think this set of uh, national assembly members are taking us back to the ninth assembly or taking us back to the eighth assembly well, we have this party party legislature kind of thing that okay cover you cover me you rub your man you rub you kind of thing we don't want that it has been laid bare that we have dirty for it nigerians witnessed it vehicles were, were just collapsing engine were being knocked out even the government admitted it the former minister of uh, petroleum resources uh tv silver admitted it so who are who are we trying to fool that there was no dirty for it why are we trying to fool that there was no big marrow between dangote and npc there was no challenge between the Farouk led the NMPRD and NMPC and Dangote. So who are we trying to fool? I think these guys who just they just want to cover their shame. And they only want to have a scapegoat. And the scapegoat is who? The media. The scapegoat is who is analysts like us who are analyzing this and pushing it that writing must be done. That's what just what they are trying to push. But we just need to encourage them. Most of you will not be there forever. You still come out and meet us out here. And you will see the reality on God. And by that time they will begin to change their mouth like an every bed. That no, 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 it wasn't like that. So we need to also tell them that, in fact, and figure, there was dirty foil, there was challenge in our oil and gas sector, particularly the cabalism, uh, the cabal uh, nature and cartel nature in our oil and gas sector. I've been an economist that I've always looked deep into the oil and gas sector as a political economist. And we have found a lot of mystery and misgiving about the oil and gas sector in Nigeria. And it's just Nigeria, it's a global thing. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Why is it thing that OPEC will always come out and say, hey, members, don't produce beyond 2 million barrels per day? Because they know what they are doing. Why is it that US and the rest of them that are not members of OPEC normally challenge it? Why is it that today nobody can clamp down on oil theft or crude oil theft, either in Nigeria or across or the anywhere world? Across because the world. it's always there. So these guys should not think that, that maybe we don't know what is happening. It's just for their own selfish interest well, well, well in closing now uh, mr de Fullerin, let's let me get your take um the reps members mm-hmm. have closed down the panel mm-hmm. probing this issue exactly don't you think they owe nigerians some sort of explanation as mm-hmm. to why it was closed mm-hmm. apart from the negative media coverage mm-hmm. that was you know mentioned mm-hmm. a more detailed explanation as to why the uh, panel was dissolved. I, 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 let me let, let me say it as a, as a means of insight into what has happened. Because in National Assembly, it is all about interest. The panel that was created have an interest. About a 50 or 60 of them said, no, don't prove Merikai and his group. The other side said, no, you have to prove them. And because of the interest that played out. And you also remember that the panel is constituted by members of the committee oversighting these agencies what do you think they're looking for future interests that will help them something that will hold their hand we need to say it something that will hold their hands in terms of give back kickback and the rest of them 
because of juicy appointment, juicy favors and investors. We have to say it. That is just what is happening. And in, in the answer other aspect of your question, that don't they have don't they owe Nigerian apology? Which apology? They already told us the people that are responsible for the for the that cause the fight. That means the media and experts like us. So they don't owe us any apology based on what they have said. But for me, it's just time that will speak on this kind of issue. They should not be surprised. Federal government can bring out a probe into it. Already, the FCC are already on their tools, ICPs are already on their tools. In no short distance from now, some of their members of that panel could also be picked up. That no one wants to. You could remember what happened in the SEC issue now. They have made it uh, Farouk Lawa. Till tomorrow, Farouk Lawa can never be found in certain Nigerian politics anymore because it, uh, he has been downgraded to the lowest of it all as a result of his uh, shenanigans and frivolous activities in the National Assembly trying to cover up corruption, which this other group of us. Uh, as are trying to do are also trying to do in the oil and gas sector that most of us know that it is a shady environment that so many things are happening well mr the for i must thank you very much for coming on the show today mm -hmm. and uh, sharing your thoughts with us on some major stories across yeah, the country